Now, the, the people may hear about it. The doctor might be enthusiastic, but people are people. And, and you think, just tell them once, oh, okay, I'll change my diet. Well, people don't do that. Why not? Because there's barriers. And we have to honor that and respect people. First of all, personal taste. Uh, people grow up. My, my daddy always made me bacon and eggs on Sunday morning. We always had the, the turkey on from you know, fish on Friday evenings. We always had the roast beef on Wednesdays, whatever. And these are, these are hardwired into us. And it, we've got to honor that and you know, can gently modify them. Find out what I asked, what's the person's favorite food? I'm Italian. I want my spaghetti. Well, great. How about pasta primavera instead of pasta uh, with meatballs? <clears throat> I like my burger. Well, there's great burgers available now. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, if I've come from Hispanic culture. Well, there's lots of you can make lovely plant-based bean burritos. They're from an Asian background. There's lovely curries and stir fries, etc. Uh, you can meet the person, you know, find out what their favorite foods are and modify them to a whole food plant-based version. <clears throat> And I'm okay if the person, listen, I don't want to go become vegan tomorrow. Great. Then taper it off. How about getting your meat eating down to once or twice a week instead of twice a day? Uh, and if it's, so it takes them three months, six months to slowly taper the, the meat products out of their diet. Fine. Uh, it's taken them th you know, the whole lifetime to get where they are. I, um, if they need to eat it once or twice a week for six months, a year, fine with me, but keep moving in that direction. And these transition foods, the impossible burgers, whatever, you know, they've got their issues, their processed food, they have salt and fat, et cetera. Yes, but they don't have cholesterol. They don't have pesticides. They don't have herbicides. They shouldn't have heavy metals. Um, they are on some levels significantly healthier. But, you know, you don't want to eat them every day. They're treat foods. But if they can help Joe's six-pack American meat and potato guy you know, bite into it and say, oh, I could eat that. That's not, that's vegan fruit. I could eat that. Then I think they, those foods have a legitimate place in the diet. It's transition foods. There comes a point you stop eating them. Uh, we have some in our freezer that have been there for months. I don't know what's next time I'll have another one. There, there are three, every three months I'll have one. But again, just, uh, just for fun, uh, not just not a stable part of my diet. <clears throat> then there's cultural issues that we really have to respect. Uh, and um, if I grew up in an Asian household, a Hispanic household. Well, seek and you shall find. Just look on the internet. I've got Italian heritage. Well, great. Do a search on low-fat vegan Italian recipes. Your, your screen will fill up with those kind of recipes. Um, East Indian, well, great. Uh, plenty of uh, recipes uh, for making low-fat, healthy, uh, whole food, plant-based, in, in Indian style, uh, Hispanic uh, recipes of all types. Um, uh, here's uh, lovely stir fries and, and curries from the, in Asian style. Yeah, it's this there. You can meet people. Uh, you can honor their culture uh, without overriding it. Now, economics are an issue. I've got young docs saying, listen, I practice in a food desert. There's nothing but 7-Elevens around. Uh, my, my, play, my, family, uh, my families can't afford this kind of eating. You know what arugula costs these days? And the, absolutely, economics is a major issue, and I, we cannot make light of that. But it turns out that the staple foods are cheap. <clears throat> you can buy 10 pounds of rice for a little over six and a half bucks. You can buy 10 pounds of lentils for less than 12 and a half bucks. Uh, and, and, and SNAP Food Assistance pays for these. Well, you can, one person can eat for two weeks off 10 pounds of rice and lentils uh, if you just have two cups of rice and a couple of lentils for lunch and, and the same again for dinner, 53 grams of protein just from the rice and lentils. So the, so the, uh, the staples are, are very economical. And, uh, and if you're not paying, you know, for T-bone steaks and ice creams and things, you got many left over to buy the broccoli, to buy the kale, et cetera, even the organic stuff. And practicing good medicine is, is beyond operating rooms and, and outpatient clinics and cath labs. I've got a couple of young ER doc friends. Every Saturday, they take their empty pickup truck to the farmer's market. At the end of the farmer's market, they go around to the vendors and they say, whatever food you haven't sold, can we buy it from you for pennies on a dollar or just give it to us? And uh, they load up their truck and they take it back to their neighborhood and they give it to the food bank. They do a mini uh, food truck uh, sales for very cheap. They're not there to make money. 
but this is a this is a high level practice of medicine, even though it involves a pickup truck and some work gloves. Um, this is how you, if you love your patients, what you're willing to do to help them. And then finally, there's the social issues. Is the family on board? Are they antagonistic? Um, no one wants to see dad with a stroke. No one wants to see mom developing Parkinson's. Um, I tell them, you know, God forbid you get a heart attack or a stroke. It's only you in that hospital bed. It's not your spouse. It's not the people at work. It's not your daughter-in-law. Just say, you know, if you decide to eat healthy plant-based, say, listen, enough with the jokes. I got to do this because I got to do this. I don't want to wind up in a wheelchair here. Help me. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll make the food delicious or we'll order, you know, healthy food here, but the, I don't need uh, offhand comments here. Help me eat healthy. And what happens, of course, is that everybody winds up eating healthier. The food tastes so great. So love and delicious food goes a long way there to overcoming these barriers. So where do you start? Uh, tell your patients, go to uh, find the film called Forks Over Knives. It's on Netflix. Watch it. They will see people getting healthy right before their eyes on a plant-based diet. Then tell them to go back to the Forks Over Knives website. They've got recipes and transition plans to help them transition. Uh, I find a little bit of extra too much salt and oil in some of Forks Over Knives recipes. So I strongly recommend uh, Rip Esselstyn's Plant Strong program. Uh, very reasonable. They've got guidance uh, to help you, coaching, uh, meal planning. There's, you'll find a whole community of folks making this transition. Uh, so check out um, Plant Strong. <clears throat> Rochester Lifestyle Medicine has a wonderful 15-day uh, jumpstart program. Take advantage cheap. 150 bucks, I think, uh, just a superb program that will take you by the hand, change your life forever. Uh, just wonderful. Um, here's the Plant Peer Communities, Nelson Campbell's crew, um, have a wonderful 10-day uh, jumpstart program. So there's plenty of programs to help you make that transition. And there's professional allies already out there. There's a fleet, battalions of plant-based dietitians. Every place I give this talk, I check out the local dietitians in the area that are plant-based. Uh, I gave this talk at, at University of Buffalo. Uh, here I was at Northwestern University in Evanston, at Nova University in Broward County. Uh, I was at uh, Razorback Land in Arkansas. Uh, I was spoke at Baylor in, in Houston, Texas, and uh, Go Blue uh, and University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. I was at Brown University in, in Providence. I spoke at Harvard and Boston. Um, spoke at Rutgers in New Jersey, Yale in New Haven, UC San Diego. Every place there are plant-based dietitians who will do this counseling for you, doctor. You don't have to do it. Find the plant-based dietitian, send the patient to them, and um, you can get the uh, you get the to see the patient back in a month. See if they're not healthier and more educated. Uh, the, if they follow the device, they certainly will be. I urge the young doctors to come back to this slide and they go to every one of these websites. There's an education waiting for you. Dr. McDougall's newsletter is an edu course in itself. Um, and uh, speaking of courses, uh, go to the website of the University of Winchester. They've got a six week online course in applied plant-based nutrition and lay people benefit from this as well as professionals. I took it, I learned a ton. Go to Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM, uh, and um, they've got CME uh, programs free for the taking, weight loss, diabetes, heart disease. You can download their medical reference guide and uh, I've got a patient with lupus or uh, colitis. You can know what dietary orders to write for them. You can make lifestyle medicine a career. Here's our friends up at Rochester Lifestyle Medicine uh, enjoying their practice. Join the Plantrition Project. You'll meet plant-based doctors from around the world, uh, India, Indonesia, Ireland. It's so exciting to see these uh, meet these doctors whose uh, plant-based awareness is uh, burgeoning around the globe. I urge you to join, I tell the med students, join the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. They are very supportive of plant-based diets. So we're at the end. I know it's been a lot of material, <coughs> excuse me. But they say, once you look behind the curtain, you can't pretend you don't know what's behind the curtain. And my job with the medical students and to you is to tear down this curtain and say, look, the, the era of applied nutrition-based lifestyle medicine is dawning. 
<clears throat> just band-aid patch them up medicine uh, is expensive and inefficient. If you want to heal these patients, then let's deal with what they're eating and how they're living their lives. And the plant-based wave is breaking, line up your surfboard. I tell them I am the happiest doctor I know because my patients get healthy right before my eyes. And I invite them to become the happiest doctor they know. This is the most powerful therapeutic tool available to any physician to truly heal their patients on the deepest level. And the invitation is to learn about it and then use it in your practice and your own daily life. We need healthy doctors. Uh, if you want to learn more about um, our work, how, what, how we're trying to get this word out to medical schools, I want to visit every medical school in the country via Zoom and around the world. Uh, go to my website, drclapper.com, and click on Moving Medicine Forward. You'll see what we're doing and how you can support us. And I invite you all to join our monthly forums. It's free of charge. Uh, and uh, click on Moving Medicine Forward and click on Clinical Nutrition Forum. And once a month, I bring in uh, clinicians from across the spectrum of plant-based nutrition and talk about all sorts of clinical con uh, conditions. And then we, the last half is Q&A for the participants uh, to ask the authority. So they're really lively, wonderful programs, free of charge. I invite you to, uh, to join us at our next uh, month's forum. So this is what I wish I learned in medical school about nutrition. Uh, and uh, through Moving Medicine Forward, uh, this information is being shared with medical students today around the world. So the invitation is to help us spread the word. Talk to your doctor about it. Talk to your medical student friends and, uh, and live a healthy plant-based life. Be a good example that spreads the word better than any, anything else we can say or do. Mm -hmm.